Welcome back to the neighborhood. Our next guest is Nick Christopher. Nick, welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you so much. Nick is one of the uh, the leaders in the South Jersey area. Oh, thank uh, you. One of the top producers. Uh, wanted to bring him in so you could talk a little bit about what he did, where, how he got in the business, and, and what he sees like in the future. So, how did you get into this crazy business? Nick? So, I kind of got into this business by accident, so to speak. Uh, I was a land surveyor probably for maybe eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. And I was building my house and got laid off two weeks before settlement. And my son was going to be one years old. Thankfully, I had my license at the time. It was not full time whatsoever, but got thrown into full time. So basically, it became sink or swim. So and what year was that? 16 years ago, so 04 okay. ish, okay. roughly. Yeah. Nice. So nice. the market sucked at the time. Um, I knew nothing but work my ass off, keep grinding, knock on doors. I, I got thrown right into everything, short sales, foreclosures, you name mm -hmm. it, um, price reductions. Got well versed in all of it real damn fast. And um, that's how I kind of built my business. I built my business starting from expires, basically. Sure. You didn't sell the house, I went and knocked on your door and tried to grab the listing. Everybody nice. knew me that I would grab an expired listing all day long. Um, and then just kind of built and built and built and built from that. Nice. And you know, if you follow people in this industry, there is a tendency to kind of try different places out and go from place to place. You've been in the same place I've for been a really the same time. office since day one. Okay. Um, they've treated me well, they trained me, they, same thing, my, my broker told me from day one, if you list, you last. If you list, you can be on the beach and someone's going to sell your house. Sure. You could be in France, you could be wherever, someone's going to sell your house. If you have inventory on the shelves, like Macy's or what have you, then mm -hmm. someone's got to come to you. So I've always been tried to focus on the listing side to keep that aspect going and you, you've got to come to me eventually. Nice, nice. And you primarily work, you're in the Washington Township area, is that your My niche, niche so to speak? Spot? Washington Township, Gloucester Township, um, I'll go anywhere honestly, if, if only if it's a referral, I'm not going to go chase business sure. in Burlington or what have you, but if you send me a deal there, then mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go for it. Um, but my, my backyard is pretty much Washington Township, Gloucester Township. Right. And you are a team leader, yes. you have people on your team. So yep. what do you look for if someone's watching this and they say, hey, I might want to call Nick and, and join his team. What do you look for in a teammate or somebody that works under you? Tough to say, like we were talking about earlier, everybody wants to be in our seat and do what we do and not always put that work ethic into that. Mm -hmm. So it's tough to gauge that. My number one thing is you, you got to put the work in. If I give you a list of three to four things and they're nothing crazy, build right. a database, very simple. Who do you know? Make a list of all those people and let's start targeting those people. Sure. Pretty simple. And then we can build off of that, build off of anybody you know, your aunts, your uncles, your barber, your mailman, your dog groomer, you name it. We, right. can, we can start building a business around that and targeting those people. And so we need is one deal again to down market off of that deal to the next deal to the sure. next deal. That's awesome. It's I had this conversation with a couple different realtors that have been on lately. As a manager of people, I can teach someone how to sell. 100%. I can teach them whatever script we want to do. I can never teach someone work ethic. Absolutely. If you totally don't have it, I know probably it. within 15 days of working here, and I'll it's give you 60 work. days to, to, to hang yourself. I agree. You can tell. It's crazy that how the people, you know, I'll interview them, and I'll almost fall in love with the fantasy of who they could be because yes. they talk so well, or they have a really great business plan in their Visions mind. Visions of grandeur that's going to happen. Yeah, they, they sell you on that, and then they get in the seat, and it's like, Six months, they're, they're made yeah. of you because they're, yeah. they're not becoming, and you go back to the question, like, well, did you do X, Y, and Z? Ah, I've been really busy. Nobody's that busy. Yeah, no way. That's awesome. Okay, so let's go uh, 365 days in the future. Okay. What do you see for yourself in the next year in this business, and what are some of your goals and what you hope to accomplish? Some of my goals are to keep growing. Um, if we're going to build a team, I keep my team kind of small, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. Um, if I'm going to grow the team, I want people that are going to, like we just talked about, that are going to work like I'm going to work and do that, have that same hustle and same mentality where they want to get to. Sure. Um, for the, Over the next year, I want to keep incorporating video and the social media concept with things because I think that's where the market is. Plus, it's free and yeah. you can reach literally millions of people for, for no sure. money at all. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. And so outside of the 9 to 5 mm -hmm. work, Nick, uh, what do you do in the 5 to 9 area? I know I see it at the gym. 5 a.m. Yeah. 5 a.m. at the gym routine kind of thing. The morning routine is I, I get up, I try to do a little bit of reading first, and then hit, take my son to school, and then hit the gym. And then from there, I 
try to get in the office between 8.30 and 9 on any given day. Um, after that, like, I typically will run out of the office by 2, 3 o'clock mo on most days, mm -hmm. and then I'll work from home the rest of the time. After that, it's either my son's baseball game or my son's baseball practice, or I'm getting him into the gym, or we're getting my daughter off to soccer practice. Nice. And two, then two kids? Two kids, nice. boy and girl. Nice. And then weekends, you're only going to get me on my cell phone or via email unless we've got a predetermined appointment. Um, typically, I'm not going to show you a house on a weekend. I'm going to give you that off to the team. Sure. Because uh, we're going to be at a tournament somewhere for the kids. Right. And you, are you able to establish those boundaries? Was that hard for you to do? At first, it was. Yeah. Um, again, my broker came to me years ago and said, anybody who has a problem with that, you tell them to come talk to me. And then I kind of set that boundary. And I made it, if you call me and say, I, I need you to come show me this house at 12 o'clock on Saturday. My son's got a game. I'm um, sorry, I have an appointment. Right. And that's it. Sure. I've got an appointment. Yeah, it's tough. I'll get you in that house, don't get me wrong. Sure. But I'm not going to be the one walking you through yeah. that door. And it's tougher, especially that's one of the things that the, the younger people or the newer people in the business to establish those boundaries. It is. It's tough, especially if you're hungry. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're broke, guess you got to go show that house. When, we you first, know I mean? when I first started, it was seven days a week. Right. And it was open houses every Sunday. It was you under the, you, you called, I went, yeah. basically, you know. And like you said, as you kind of establish yourself, you learn to start setting boundaries because you have to, otherwise you're going to burn yourself out on top yeah. of it. How do you juggle the Nick the realtor to Nick the dad, Nick the family man, Not very all well. that stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, it is tough. It's really tough. The phone's always on. It's It'll shut off. At, like It'll go to do not disturb by 9 o'clock. Typically, I won't take a call after 8 unless it's we've got a deal in the works or something sure, like that. Sure. Um, the weekend depends on where we're at or what have you. Again, what's going on, I'll take the call. Um, but it's it's not a 9 to 5 business. It's 24-7. No. It's it's constantly thinking of what the next deal is, or did I get that addendum signed? What's going on with this home inspection? Did I follow up with this client? It's you'll wake up in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, and shoot, did I, did I take care of this? Or I got to remember to take care of this, you know. So, but I think that's also what separates us from other people to to have that desire to, you know, that it's this is the biggest transaction someone's ever going to do in their life, more sure. than likely. So, and they're trusting us to do it. So. Yeah. I look at it, don't screw it up. Yeah, it's, it's flattering that people trust us. Correct. Um, so, okay, let's say you're looking back now, self-reflection from the 16 years you've been in there. Is there one thing that pops out to you where it kind of digs at you and you go, man, I wish I would have done that differently? Hmm. I'm not a phone person. So okay. maybe, maybe looking back, that would be my thing. I know some of the agents that I talk to and some of the other agents that are top producers as well are big on phones. And I've never seen myself as like that telemarketer, so to speak. Where okay. You mean cold headset. calls? Yep. Okay. I've, I've always, all my, 95% of my business comes from referral. So I've never picked up the phone and dialed for dollars or so to speak and sure. all that stuff. I've never seen myself in that aspect. And I, I know if you look at Tom Ferry and Feeney's and all these big time coaches, they do preach that. I just never can wrap my head around it. I bought dialers in the past and throwing that money yeah. out the door. And, Gone. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you're kind of in the in the same age group contemporary as me. How are you transitioning with all the technological changes and the, the I mean, you, you said you don't like the phone, so that's probably a little better. But like some people don't ever want to talk on the phone and they only want me to text them. When no, I'm um, I'll with do them. both. It, basically, how you're going to communicate with me, I'm going to communicate with you. Okay. Um, I am a huge texter because I like the text because we're. We get a million phone calls sure. a day, so I can look back at a text like, oh, I did present this to them, or I did, we did talk about this. So I kind of have a rolling note of yeah. things, exactly. Or emails as well. Um, depending on, like, I have a couple of offers coming in on a property right now, and I told them straight up, I'm like, I'm going to text you them, basically the cliff notes of what's going on. Right. And we're going to run this showing through, through the weekend, but come Monday, we're going to have a conversation of all these in detail. I'm just going to tell you it's 240 with... 20% down, 10% down, close date, da, 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 conventional FHA, VA, so to speak. And then come Monday morning when we have all those offers in front of me and I, I have all the details, now we're going to have that full conversation of right. what's going on with it. Right. So in your experience, because there's a common buzz in the industry right now, if it's not conventional or cash, it's not a good offer. When you see a VA offer come in or an FHA offer come in, is there anything that a, a buyer could do that would make them look better in your eyes when you're fielding offers. It's a conversation. Yeah. Um, 
too many agents are just going to send an offer over and never have a phone call after the fact, never tell you that maybe this is their in-house lender, their preferred lender, it's their sure. brother, their cousin, whatever the case may be. Um, I think that's important because nobody wants to talk, again, nobody wants to talk anymore. They'll just right. send it over and keep right. their fingers crossed like, my buyer's golden. Yeah, okay, sure. Give me the details. If you're going to go over asking, give me um, proof of funds with that. Give me, you know, why. I, I don't care about the love letter and all because I'm not going to read it. And I tell right. my seller, if you want to read it, go ahead and read sure. it. But I could care less about it. It's a business decision for us. I'm not swayed by FHA, VA, what, what have you. Um, if, if the deal's strong and the deal makes sense and you, you've got money to back the deal up and it's, it's a lender that we can all agree on, let's awesome. do it. I love that answer. That's great. That makes me feel good because I talk to a lot of realtors and they're like, oh, it's got to be cash. And I'll cash say, is well, great. Don't cash is great, <laughs> sure. But if you have somebody that, you know, like if you have somebody who's a, an FHA buyer, they're putting 10% down and they're willing to put all 10% in escrow at yeah. the time, you know, they're a pretty strong buyer. Yeah. If there's a reason they're why, they're this or that, yeah, or, you 53 know. debt to income ratio, yep. can't get approved conventional, but that doesn't mean they're not a strong buyer. Correct. They're, they have $50,000 they're going to give you to hold the property. And I've had some of those where it just, it made more, the rate was better, it made more sense. Yeah. And we had, back to, we had that conversation, so I'm like, okay, right. that makes sense. That's Instead awesome. of just sending that offer over and they're like, oh, it's a VA offer, or FHA offer, now nah, we're good. Yeah. Cool. All right, here's your personal question. Okay. Uh, I know you do, you're a little bit sports. I picked that up with you. So you can go to any sporting event that ever happened and watch it right now in the present, and you can bring one person with you to watch the game. What's the event you would go see, and who's the person you would bring with you? That's tough. I would do Duke Carolina, any game, probably. Okay. Um, who would I bring? That's a tough one. Either they're all going to hate me. Either my dad, my son, or my wife. All right. Awesome. Cool. Nick, thanks for coming in. Pleasure. Thank you for having Pleasure me. Pleasure having you. We'll be back with the next guest on Mr. Mortgage's Neighborhood.